Hello everybody, welcome to this painting tutorial with myself John. In this one we're going to be tackling some Moonstone and this character, Jada, who is a fawn soldier. And uh, I was asked by the people that came over and filmed with us, uh, is there any miniatures I'd like to paint? I seen Jada as part of one of the, the other box sets, I think, do I have the box somewhere? I can't remember. Um, and I seen her in one of the boxes and I was like, I'd like to paint her. So they sent her over for me and um, let me have a go. And this is one of the most fun models I've had to paint in a long time. Uh, there's a lot of very interesting colours going on. She's a beautiful model anyway, absolutely fantastic sculpt. And uh, a little bit fragile because it's a resin piece. But um, in general, this is a fantastic miniature. If you feel like doing something a little different, if you're a bit tired of armored space giants or you know big robotic things or anything like that pick up something like this and just give it a try and uh, you'll see throughout this video I go a little bit further than I usually do uh, that's partly for two reasons one Moonstone to me feels like a smaller sort of skirmish style game in which case I like to add a little bit more detail to the characters as I'm painting them because they're characters because they're not members of a squad they're not all the same in a certain regard same approach with board gaming miniatures as well always like to add a little bit more to them uh, just to make each character shine a little bit more so that and the fact that I just fell in love with this miniature as soon as I had it built and primed I thought I, I really want to try uh, a little bit harder on this one so hopefully that comes across in the video but as always let's just get stuck in. So to begin work on uh, Jada, I believe that I'm pronouncing her name right, the uh, the guys from Moonstone can tell me if I'm doing it wrong. Uh, I was checking out the the art that they have of her and um, you know I have her, her uh, stack card back here and it has a vague reminder of the colours. She's very earthy but she has this really high contrast sort of white hair and, and stuff like that um, and I'm going to try and mimic that as best I can here. So the first step was priming. I have built and primed. I washed the miniature because it's a resin miniature and uh, made sure it was in sort of warm soapy water. Gave it a little bit of a scrub to remove some of the, the flash. There's a little bit of it. Just take your time and you, you get a good finish. So after that I did the priming which is just Halford's Grey body primer, like their car body primer. There is nothing special about that but it gives us this great blank canvas to uh, to begin work with. So the first thing I want to start on is her skin and her skin in the art is kind of a greeny sort of browny sort of color. Uh, it kind of suggests maybe it's a bit of fur or you know a very th fine coat of something. So I'm going to lean into that a little bit and uh, we're going to start with uh, a paint from the Panzer Aces range. This is 314 canvas and this has a very nice greeny tone to it. You'll also notice now in this video I have a palette back here and some water uh, because I really felt I was missing out on uh, showing some of my method here because you know just we need to do that now. So I'm putting some of the canvas down onto my little uh, plate here. This is just a piece of plastic card I had lying around. It's about time I started using some materials that I have and um, what I'm going to mix this with is a bit of um, Kislev flesh just to lighten this green a little bit and stop it looking a little bit too um, olive drab uh, in nature so we'll hopefully if this paint isn't completely ruined we're going to get a bit of that onto my brush uh, it does look like it's messed up a little bit. Do I have another thing of this? Well let's give it a shake and uh, I think I do have another Kislev or Acadian even. I have another Kislev. It seems this one, for whatever reason, is completely messed up. I'm gonna have to work on that. Hopefully this one is a bit better. So yes, this is fine. That's absolutely fine. So I'll wash the other mess off. And we're gonna take some of this Kislev and just mix the two together. And what I'm looking for is just a lighter, a lighter version of that green. Nothing too, too mind-boggling here. We just want to make sure that it's just not as olive drab, <laughs> because I I do tend to like my olive drab quite a bit, and um, I do tend to have a lot of that color lying around my house. So we'll do a bit more than that. We'll try and mix the whole lot here. 
and uh, just get a sort of a a muted, or more muted greeny skin tone going on here. What do you think? Maybe a bit more than that? I think maybe a bit more than that. Okay. Yeah, I think we're we're on to a winner here. This is fun. I get to play with a palette on camera now as well, just to make sure you guys see what what's actually happening here. So always remember to rotate. And what we're going to do now is just give her skin this base coat. It's probably going to take a couple of coats, and at this stage as well, I wanted to do the skin first because I really didn't, um, I wasn't going to have to worry about being neat with it initially. We can figure out placement of other colours later and uh, use that all as a tidy up step. So, and what's really good is these Vallejo paints run so smooth, even with just a little bit of water. And even though I'm mixing with the Citadel paint, they just, they still behave really, really nicely. So we're going to get her skin down, probably take a couple of coats just to make sure we have this done right. And uh, when I come back, when it's all dry, we can have a look at what the next step is going to be. With the base colour now down on the skin, we can have a, a brief look at how that's turned out. Uh, it's quite tidy looking, uh, pretty much what I was hoping to achieve as well. Nice and smooth and good and tidy. So we're going to shade this now a little bit, but we're going to and we're going to use um, Seraphim Sepia, just because we don't want to overpower uh, the initial coat too much. Uh, so we're going to take some of that and um, we'll put a couple of drops down there onto the palette just behind us. Add a little bit of water. In fact, clean the brush off a little bit. I don't want the the wash to um, to dry and damage any of the bristles as I'm working. And um, just apply a little bit of water to the brush, and then we can start to apply it to the miniature. So nothing too drastic here. We don't want to go too heavy. Just a matter of getting it into all the um, the nooks and crannies on the miniature. Let it do its job as a bit of a shade. I think once we have this down on the entire miniature, we'll uh, let it dry and then we'll have a look at some highlighting and um, maybe a little bit of uh, body paint as well because she does have a little mark that runs across the bridge of her nose and under her eyes. Um, if we want to try and achieve that or something similar, uh, I think we'll give that a go as well because it, it definitely plays into her um, quite tribal looking uh, aesthetic so yeah we'll work on that once we have the wash down and a little bit of a highlight coming up next. So with the sepia now dry we can have a look at the shading that that is given uh, to her skin and that's working pretty well nice and thin uh, the shadows are exactly where they need to be uh, has left her a little bit glossy but that's okay not a big deal what I have done is taken a little bit of sepia without any water in it and went around like the top edges and bottom edges of some of her clothing not that she's wearing much anyway uh, just to add a little bit of a heavier shading in and around those areas it just makes a bit more sense so at this point we're going to look at um, highlighting the skin and we're going to do that with a little bit of a dry brush now the dry brush is going to consist if I move her to the side for a minute it's going to consist of some more canvas but we're going to mix it this time with a little bit of Zandri dust uh, because that, again, is going to lighten it up, but still retain a little bit of the green tone from the canvas. So, here we go again. So we're going to mix a little bit of the canvas. And take some of our Zandri dust. Always give it a good shake. And we're going to lay some of that out. Just a little bit more than the canvas. Probably a fair bit more than the canvas. And then with our brush with a little bit of water on it, we'll just mix the two up and uh, see what we get. So again, we're looking for a little bit of that green tone in there, but we're looking for something that's a lot, well, a fair bit brighter than the original 
than the base skin tone with the wash currently. So a little bit more water on the brush. And we can compare what we have to what there is. I think we're probably not a million miles off there. So I'm going to add a little bit more Zandri dust. And just to keep working on that lightening of the tone a little bit. This is probably going to end up looking quite subtle, but that's perfectly fine. I'm not, uh, I'm not in for big, heavy highlights of stuff like this, um, particularly on a miniature that certainly suggests that there's a bit of a fur coat going on there. I want it all to look a little more subtle. And um, I think Jada in particular is a very muted uh, character in her, her color palette. Apart from the more the darker brown of her clothing and the, the striking sort of white grey of her hair. So let's see if we apply this to a dry brush now uh, what we get. Now I am using a larger dry brush here. Just because I really want it to be not a very fine dry brush, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect. So, let's see what we get when we start applying this to this leg at least first. I think that's going to turn out alright. I have to be careful here because this is a resin miniature and resin miniatures, particularly with her pose, this miniature is a little fragile when it comes to doing something that's a bit rougher, uh, like a dry brush here. And what I'm really aiming to do here is to just work on highlighting this, her skin a little bit, just enough that it still looks interesting and still has, retains the shade and the tones that we've been working on. I think that is probably going to work out okay. And what, what this is essentially doing is leaving a lot of the shading work and the, the, the base skin tone in the darker recesses of the body and it's letting us control the lighting a little bit more. You know, what, what aspects of her do we want to be more visible or more uh, hit with the light? Which is why I'm doing it in this pattern, sort of going vertical against the, the uh, detail here, because that's just going to touch the top areas of her skin. You can see how flexible this leg is that she's posed on. It's definitely quite delicate, so we've got to be careful. And that's, that's the moment where I snap the model. <laughs> when I say that you have to be careful, that's the moment I snap it. So I'm just trying to avoid that as much as possible. We're not going to get anything on our chest there because that's just too, too much in shadow. So what we'll do is add a bit more to the face just to bring that up a little higher. I mean, we definitely got our nose. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a very visible nose. What I'm trying to do is get her cheek a bit more and it might be worth going in with a little brush here. Uh, we'll just dampen a little brush and uh, see if we can't bring out a little bit more in the face. I think it's probably going to be about it. And trying to keep it subtle, what I will do is water this down a bit more. And maybe smooth in some of the areas there a little bit. A bit too much. 
I know this is starting to defeat the purpose of doing the dry brush a little bit, but I think if I feel like it's it's worth that little extra layer in places just to tidy some pieces up. I think that is probably it. So let's try for uh, some some body paint, some war paint. Uh, get a few markings down on her perhaps and uh, I think for that I'm gonna have to move this to the side and I think we're going to go with a little bit of Ulthuan Grey here because it's a quite a nice off-white it's a bluey white and I don't want it to be a pure white marking and we'll see a bit more of this paint very soon when we start uh, on her hair as well so let's get a little bit of that onto the palette. Bit of water on the brush. Okay. So we know she has a marking on the character art across her the bridge of her nose here, so Apparently I have not sent the paint enough. I mean it's not it's not the best. I, I generally I'm not very good at that. I really need to practice my um finer movements and my, my brush control a little bit more. But it is there, <laughs> and we can always tidy it up if we feel like it later on. Um, but on such a finely detailed and small miniature anyway, I think that's that's close enough to what we um, or what I wanted to achieve. So next step, then we're going to move on to her hair. Or we're going to start with her hair, and to get this really nice, bright, contrasty hair. We're going to start with some Army Painter uh, Spaceship Exterior. And that again is a more off-white grey colour. So we're going to put a bit of that down on the palette. That looks very thin. And what we're going to do... Dump on the brush again, see how thin that is. I think that should be okay. Well maybe need to give this a good couple of coats because that does look very thin. So what we're going to aim to do here is basically paint in the hair with spaceship exterior first. We need to be careful to avoid her ears. So we need to be careful here at this point to avoid her ears and the stuff that we just finished painting and we're going to give the hair a couple of coats of this just to make sure it's good and solid and after that we'll move on. With that layer of uh, spaceship exterior down or that base coat we're gonna have a look at just how much hair this woman has and there is a lot of it. So we're gonna move on now uh, to shading this hair a little bit and for that I'm going to be using a mixture of Ulthuan Grey and mixing it with a little bit of contrast medium. Not sure if this is going to work the way I want it to but it's going to create a wash anyway and it's going to help, it's going to do what I want it to. So, we'll get a little bit of our Ulthuan, I'll dip my brush in some water, get some Ulthuan out of the pot, and we have already a little bit there that was there previously. So, don't need too much of that. Wash the brush, move the pot to the side, open our contrast medium up. And what we're going to do is just start mixing this to the point where it's basically thin enough to apply over the hair in a layer. And this is only slightly, a slightly different colour than the base, so it's going to just add a little bit of shade to the hair. So let's just see how that turns out. 
This is going to give it a little bit of a bluey tone. It's already a bit of a grey colour anyway, so adding this to it should tone it a little bit. I don't want too much uh, of a shift in colour. It's just going to be a little colder looking. And then after that we'll uh, start applying some highlights to it. And that's really all I want to do with the hair. Everything just needs a three-step program. You know, it needs the base, it needs a shade, and it needs a highlight. And that is all we're trying to do on each step of the miniature. This should also tidy up a little bit of the base coat too. It might cover some of the areas that I might not have gotten at properly. But it's just a case of persevering and uh, seeing what our end result is. With our little paint wash dry, we can have a look around and see it's not really doing a lot for us, but it is shading the hair just a touch. And um, all I really wanted it to do was to tone the hair a little, which it seems to have done rather well. And now we can move on to highlighting. Now for highlighting, we're going to go with Praxetti White, because uh, it's a nice dry paint and we are going to use a small dry brush. So I'm going to put, I'll put this into the shot because I can show it now. And uh, I think that's dry. Yeah, that's dry. So we can see, kind of see what, what's going on here. We want to remove as much paint off the brush again as possible. And just so it's nice and powdery. And then, again, we're going to have to hold the miniature carefully and start to work the dry brush. Perpendicular to the, the detail. Most of the detail is flowing this way, so we want to be brushing in this sort of horizontal manner here. I'm going to put a bit more onto the brush. Test it on my thumb a little bit. And all I'm going to do is let the paint pick where it wants to uh, to stick to the miniature. So we want to be careful at this point as well that we don't um, don't do it too much or too heavy over areas that are going to get paint that we don't want them to. In fact, at this point, we might actually we may as well change brush a little and use a smaller brush. That way, we've got a bit more control over it. Not too worried about hitting the horns at this stage, but I am worried about um, hitting the face detail and a few other bits that we've already painted. We don't want to ruin what we've already done. So we can always revisit that if we're not happy with it later. Never, <laughs> never consider a piece finished until you're happy that it's finished. I'll have a closer look at that later and see if there's any more that I want to do. In the meantime, we're going to switch gears up and close that. I'm going to wash the dry brush as well. I'll set that to one side. And what we're going to work on now is we're going to start on her clothing. So the clothing as a base coat, I believe I'm either going to go with one of two colors here and I can't decide which one I think. I'm going to go with uh, Steel Legion Drab for this one. This is a nice good little base colour. So we're going to take some of that and put it onto our brush and then put it onto our palette. This is quite a nice neutral brown that we're working with here so make sure that the brush is ready for it. And then it's going to be a case of going over everything we want to be this colour. So basically everything she's wearing that's cloth or leather or whatever it it would happen to be. So we'll paint in that lagging as well. And really it's just going to be a matter of going around the miniature, picking these details out and getting that base colour down. So again always being careful not to go over anything we've already done. That way we're going to slow the process down if we start making mistakes. With all her clothing and uh, the quiver on her back now painted 
uh, in our brown, which was the Steel Legion Drab, we're going to start work on uh, the shading of this. So the shading is going to be pretty simple. Uh, we're just going to use uh, Agrax Earth Shade. And the reason we're picking this shade is because I want the clothing uh, to be a bit darker than everything else. Because at the minute she's kind of blending into herself a little bit, apart from the hair. And um, we need something to, to bring a difference forward. Uh, that shows that this is clothing and not just part of her at a distance. So this is what we're going to go with. So as per usual, we're going to take our brush, we're going to dampen it a little bit, and we'll put out a little bit of this onto the palette here. But we're going to switch brush size down a little bit. more than that and then we're going to basically start applying this wash over all those brown areas so <clears throat> what I'm hoping is that we get a, a fairly you know a bit of a darker cloth that has a, a nice gentle highlight to it but um, builds up that little bit of contrast to sort of show that this is definitely cloth like her skin the only real difference in her skin here is that it has a slightly greener tone than what she's wearing, so it's basically just finding a way to uh, separate the two a little bit, make them look a little less muddy, or in this case maybe the cloth needs to look more muddy. So this is what we're going to do, go over all this and then when it's dry we'll come back and look at some highlighting. With the wash now dry over all the clothing we can see now that we're getting a, a nice uh, change in contrast here between her skin and uh, the clothing that she's wearing. So at this point we're going to make a little bit of a mix to highlight this with. So we're going to be returning to the Steel Legion Drab that we used uh, for the base coat and we're going to be mixing in a little bit of a brighter colour here which is Vallejo Model Colour Flat Earth. So we're going to use a bit of that. We're going to mix that on the palette. So again give the pot a little bit of a shake, grab a brush, and uh, we'll get a, an amount of this out onto the palette here, which has mostly dried, so we can just set stuff down over the top of what we were using. Now, would this be a good colour to mix with it? I think we might actually change it. Actually, yes, we are. Sorry, I will change that because I think it's too dark. We're going to um, switch over to Morgas Bone here now, and we're going to mix a bit of that up. So we'll take a bit of that. We're going to mix the two together. I'm going to try add a little bit more. bit more to that, just to lighten that up a little. I think that should be a good highlight colour with enough traits of the original colour in there. Like so. Let's wash the brush off. Set that to the side. And we'll get a smaller brush. I have a, a 2 zero brush here that I'm about to use, so make sure the paints are closed. Dip it into some water, make sure it's fine. And then we'll take a little bit of our mix. And we will start to highlight Jada up a little bit. So go with the edges of the cloth first. And quite a nice highlight colour there, I think. And what we can do is we can take a bit of it on the palette and thin it down. We'll add a fair bit of water to that, make it a lot thinner. And then we'll use it on the, the creases of the cloth. And it's just going to be a case of going around all these parts 
and just doing getting a similar finish on each area so we don't want to overdo it too much but we do want enough of a highlight to be pretty obvious and you know keeps that that flowing nature of the cloth looking good and uh, we'll do that across all these leather pieces and uh, what I will also do is take some straight Morgas bone and paint in the twine or the string or the rope that's going around the quiver uh, just to highlight that up and just really make that stand out a little bit more so that's what we're going to do now and then when we come back we'll have a look at uh, maybe a few other details like particularly we'll probably move on to her horns and uh, the woodwork on the bow and the, the arrows so with the highlighting all done I did a couple of extra things here I painted the arrows and the bow with uh, just Vallejo Flat Earth, the, the colour that we mentioned before. Uh, just a simple base coat, nothing fancy there. Just to make sure I had those details uh, painted in as we moved on. So only a few things really left to do. Uh, that's a little bit of metal work. So we have the throwing knives on our thigh and the arrowhead uh, on the arrows. So a few things there with metallics. Uh, there's a few other bits we could do. There's a belt buckle and a bit of a chain in there that we can we can play with. And uh, we have to work on her horns and her hooves next. So what I want to do for those is, let me see here if I can think about it a little bit. Uh, I want to start with Morgast bone on the horns. I want the newer, the, the horn, the, the parts of the horns that are closer to her head to be a bit cleaner, fresher looking, and try and get a fade out uh, to the edges of them. So here we go anyway, we'll give this a shot. So more gas bone, uh, just straight from the pot, we'll put a little bit onto our palette here, water it down a little touch, and then we'll paint in her horns. Now there's a couple of flowers there as well, we, we'll be able to avoid those without too much issue. And it really depends how this looks as to what way I want to go with them because I'm not sure how confident I am that I can get a nice looking uh, fade into maybe a darker brown. At the minute I'm just sort of getting the base coat down and then seeing where I can take it from there. Really need to, at this stage in the miniature, really need to be careful about hitting any of the other details that are present. So. Just a case of being as careful as we can, making sure that I get the details in that I want. I think that's going to be enough. So, from here, while that is still wet, um, I think we'll go with a little bit of, I'd say we'll go to Zandri Dust next. We'll put a bit of that on our brush and put that onto the palette as well. Water that down. So this is just a slightly darker colour than Morgast. So we're going to start at about the halfway point. And start to work that colour into the horn as well. Get it right to the tips. That's not too bad. Now we have a little bit of the flat earth still on the palette, wet from where I painted the bow. And what I'm going to do is thin that right down on the palette and then go right up here. Maybe a bit more than that, a bit heavier than that. We'll take that right up to the tip of the horn. It probably doesn't look like much there, but if it's dry and we get a wash over it, it might be okay, and then we can highlight it with um, probably another little bit of more gas bone just to really get a bit of highlighting going there. Now, while we're waiting for that to dry, let's have a look at what else we want to do. I really like that angle there. There's a lot of highlighting and stuff on display there. It looks really good. Um, 
I think we'll go on to the woodwork and that requires a bit of a wash and because the wood I want it to look a bit more aged we're going to go with some Agrax Earthshade so again we'll get some of that drop it onto the palette we're just going to go straight this time we're not going to uh, wash it down or anything or we're not going to make it too thin so let's apply some of that I want this to look a bit more heavily treated or like an older piece of wood perhaps take that right up to the hand as well because the wash will help with the um, the grip that's on the center of the bow make sure I keep her in focus on both the cameras We'll do the same on the arrows as well. Okay, that should be all right for the bow. Get a bit more. We'll run it along the arrow. Again, we want to be careful not to touch anything that, with the wash that we've already done. Make sure that's underneath is okay. And then the arrows in the quiver. We can go a bit heavier with those, get a, a greater sense of depth. Make it look like there's more in there, or you know, it's quite busy looking. It also shades in the area where the arrows meet the quiver as well, so we're getting a, a good bit of shadow in there. So, the horns aren't dry yet, but um, we'll give them a little wash once they are. And while all that is drying, let's look at some metals. So let's get some metals down. Um, I think for metals, we're just going to go pretty simple. I think we'll start with um, canoptic alloy here. I don't want these to look like really high quality metals. I want it to look more like a, a sort of a pig iron sort of very basic. I don't want them to be too fancy looking. Just something that does the job for her and doesn't cost a lot either, I would imagine. Keep them cheap and simple. So give that arrowhead a good Hair of that looks okay, and then we'll do the um, we'll do the throwing knives as well. So we'll get a bit of that down on the palette and thin it a little. And trying to be as careful as possible here. Now with those little details starting to be painted, we're starting to see less of the primer uh, hanging around and we're starting to get a better feel for uh, how the miniature is turning out. So, so far so good, I'm quite happy with it. Now, the next thing I want to try and tackle here is um, she has the flowers on the base of the horn and she has a little another flower shaped thing here. I'm not sure if it's an actual flower or if it's meant to be like a like a brooch or, or something like that and um, I think for those I'm going to take a little bit of uh, let me see here and just grab it off the shelf real quick I think we'll take a bit of wraith bone and just base coat those in the wraith bone for now this is opening us up to use a little bit of contrast paint uh, on these details just to have them coloured in and uh, we'll also apply the wraith bone to the uh, flights on her arrows 
So again, just shaking the pot and then adding a little bit of water to it on the palate. That way we're getting a good consistency on the paint. So we're going to paint this in. Just base coat this. It feels definitely more like a, a badge or a little symbol more than anything else. Because just the way it's sculpted, it just suggests itself that it, that's what it is. And then up here... They, they probably are brooches, to be fair. Or a little headpiece, little pieces of jewellery. And what these will do is, is really allow us to have a nice splash of colour. Like something really bright. I think there might be, this stuff might be dry enough to do that on now. Even if it's not, it's more just a case of having it ready to apply another colour to. We're not too worried if it bleeds a little bit. But I think we might have gotten away with it just about. Okay, so we're going to leave these steps to fully dry for about 15-20 minutes, I think. Oh, no, sorry. I completely forgot about our hooves. It completely slipped my mind. So what I'm going to do with those, because I think they're going to be, they are going to be a similar um, material to her horns, but at the same time I think, again, a little bit of contrast further down the miniature here will help out. So I'm going to go with some Dark Reaper for that, so it's sort of a deeper colour, and then we're going to probably wash them uh, with a brown In fact, it might not be such a bad idea to maybe even apply some of this to the horns, but I'm I'm not sure. I think I'm happy with the horns as they are. But I do want the hooves just to be this little bit darker. Let's get a bit of that. And this won't matter so much because of this one being on the base. I mean, you can always argue that hooves are going to be a different colour. Be careful on this one here, as it's very close to that loincloth. I'll take a closer look at that after a while, but that's kind of what I'm aiming for there. So let's let all this dry, let it settle, and then when we come back we'll start looking at a few more highlights and a few more washes. So with the metallics and the washes dry, uh, we're going to move on to a, a quick little wash here of uh, Seraphim Sepia, and we're going to use that on our metallic details. So let's just uh, get a little bit onto the palette here. All we want is just to tone the point of the arrowhead a little bit. And then work on the throwing knives just a touch. So not too much required there. Uh, anything else we're thinking of here? Um, not really for that, no. Well actually no, sorry. We are, we're going to do the same on the horns. So we're going to put some sepia wash onto these horns. Help tone them all in a little bit more. I actually quite look how, like how they're looking now, so it's always a plus to enjoy, uh, to like the look of them as you're working on them. And before anybody else asks, yes, I will be painting the eyes, but I am not confident enough that I would be able to do them on camera first time. You, you guys know what I'm like with eyes now. So. 
I think with that, let's wash the brush off. Uh, let's have a quick think here. Uh, let's do the fletching or the flights on the arrows. Now we want something interesting. Uh, so let's, I'm going to quickly pour through my contrast paints. And I think I'm going to go with something fairly vibrant. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with a, a Talisar Blue. We've not used that in a while in some of these videos. And I think that little splash of colour is going to be quite interesting. So, again, I'm going to put a little bit of it onto my palette. And then we'll just quickly colour in these flights. And that does certainly give a bit of visual interest there. That's going to be quite interesting, quite bright. And same again on her quiver. You know, make it look like she's taking these flights off quite an exotic bird or something like that. Quite just as a, a splash, you know, we, we need a bit of personality here because at the minute she's still very drab and uh, I think adding some style with this is uh, definitely an interesting way to go probably the correct way to go at this point because we don't want the miniature to just lose itself entirely uh, on the tabletop now, with that said, we're going to add some more because we have the, the flowers or the, the brooches or whatever, the jewellery, perhaps. And uh, I think I'm going to go with a volubus pink contrast on those. So she's blue, pink and brown, which is an interesting one. So I'm going to dampen my brush that to the side and put a bit of that down there. Add a bit of water to my brush just to thin it out a touch. That should be enough. And we'll start with the one down on the bottom of her leg here. All we're doing here is working that paint into the recesses on there. Let it tone the centerpiece of the flower. And then up here at the base of the horns. There and there, the pieces that we did in the bone colour earlier. Just let that wash move around. So now we've got some interesting colour going on and a few other bits and bobs. Now that sepia has probably dried by now. So what we'll do next is take a bit of Runefang steel, and we're going to highlight the arrowheads, or the arrowhead, and the knives. So give that pot a little shake. Again, with our brush with a little bit of water on it, we'll put some down here. We really don't need that much for it, so I'll just move that pot out of the way. Make sure there's no water on the, that part of the brush. And what we're going to do here is a little line in the center and then a little bit of a highlight along the top. And that's basically all we want to do uh, with the arrowhead. Same on the other side. And I'll try and keep her in focus here. A little line down the center. And then across the top, like so. A bit more water on the brush. Take a little excess off, and then we're going to just add a little bit to the knives.
like so. So not really a lot to do there. And also while I'm thinking about it, I still have some sepia. Well, no, I don't really have any sepia left there. Um, but I will quickly open the pot again just to cover her hooves because it's just a flat color at the minute. That's not good enough. Just want them to be toned down. We're not going to do much else with those. It's just a matter of having some form of shading down on them. Just to show that we did give them some attention. So, pretty decent. Happy enough. Uh, I think for the wood, the bow and stuff like that, um, I'll probably take a bit of Morgast bone here again. And I think we'll dry brush some of that onto the bow. So again, we're taking this large dry brush here, swirling it around. And holding the miniature carefully, we'll just do a few perpendicular strokes with the brush. And that just gives us a very charming, simple highlight to that wood. Again, it's just enough to show that we've paid it some attention and we've done something that helps the overall look of the miniature again. So we'll move that to the side. Again, we'll take a bit more of the Morgast bone. Put some of it on our palette. You can see we're slowly working our way across this palette. And we'll thin it right down this time. In fact, even thinner than that. Okay, and then we'll bring her back into focus. Just run a little line of that across the top of that arrow. Take off some of that excess. And then back here on her quiver. Just do a few little highlights. Like that, just to keep playing with that depth there a little bit. <coughs> now, She's almost finished, so what I am going to do <laughs> is attempt to paint the eyes, and I'm not going to do that on camera. I do f do forgive me for that. It's it's something that I'm so paranoid about that um, I'm just not confident enough with it yet. You can always tell me uh, in the comments how you guys do your eyes, and. Uh, yeah, I think maybe after that we'll just um, do our usual of painting the base black, giving her a, a coat of matte varnish. And um, maybe see, is there anything else really I've missed? Yes, there is. Do you know what I've missed? I've missed some uh, leather wrap and stuff around her, around her bow. So I'm going to take another contrast paint here. Uh, Blood Angel's red this time. And what I'm going to do with that is just quickly colour in just this piece of wrap around the bow here. Again, it's just another little injection of colour and then a little bit just behind the arrowhead as well. Just like that. Again, just adds another little bit of colour in there, so there's something for your eyes to pick up from distance and something a bit up close. So what I'll do is I'll paint the eyes, uh, then give her a, her base a black, and then give her a matte varnish, and then we can finally say that this miniature is finished. So 
I will explain to you what I what I do to the eyes. Don't worry about that. I will explain. Um, but yeah, when we come back, we'll have the miniature finished. So here we finally have Jada completely done, matte varnished, and uh, the base blackened, and um, I'm really happy with this one. I, I really like how this one turned out, and I, I think maybe it became obvious uh, through the video that I really just enjoyed working on her. Uh, so the eyes, well the eye, is just a little bit of Ulthuan grey and a little bit of black, uh, with a bit of Agrax sort of shade added to her mouth, and to the ridge, uh, the sides of her nose as well, just to add a bit of depth there, just to bring the facial details out a little bit more. Uh, the horns also got a tiny dry brush of Ushapti bone, uh, just to give them a little bit of a highlight. I think they've turned out okay. They're not the best. I I would be far from uh, be far from correct in saying that they're they're good. I think everything in general uh, is just a good solid paint job and uh, you know this cloth on the back is really good and overall I'm very happy with the result there's obviously things we could do to improve on it I also went in with a, a small brush and some more Ulthuan Grey just to pick out some of the hair that is cascading down uh, across her chest there because I'd missed that earlier in my uh, my first couple of passes so in general I've really enjoyed working on this miniature. I think she's turned out very well. Uh, if we look at the further away shot, we see that contrast between her sort of more drab form, but the uh, the flashes of color with the white hair, the blue on the flights of the arrows and the little bits of pink uh, on the, the brooches or the icons that are around her ankle there and at the base of her horns. I think in general, she's a very solid miniature that would look great on a table uh, for Moonstone. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. I've really enjoyed this one. I hope you have too. Uh, if there's anything you want to suggest or talk about, please leave it down in the comments below. I will try and get back to you uh, as soon as I see your messages or as, as soon as possible, really. But, as always, once again, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I will see you all again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.